So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this pretty new pen called the Leustrom 1917 Dare Griffle. So uh, not a name that exactly rolls off the tongue here in the US, but a very interesting pen nonetheless. I think a lot of us will be familiar with this company. I believe it's pronounced Leustrom 1917. They make some really great notebooks and journals and uh, one of the favorites with the fountain pen community. I have a bunch of their notebooks and I really like them a lot. They haven't really been in the pen and pencil game, uh, at least to a notable degree from my understanding. And then they came out with this pen called the Dare Griffle. And uh, I think it's been around for a few months now. It's been a little bit hard to find in the US, but you can get them now off Amazon, some other places. It sells for about $30. It's a ballpoint pen, metal body with a twist mechanism here. We've seen a few pens use a similar mechanism. So uh, this was not completely a shock to come up with a design with this like this, but it's an interesting pen and a lot of people have been picking this one up this year. So I wanted to take a look at it. Comes in a cool little box like this. Rotring uses very similar boxes. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know, it's a nice touch. Cool to see. The pen's made in Taiwan, designed in Germany. Uh, both of those are pretty, pretty good size, uh, pretty good signs if you want to uh, generalize. It's a Kugelschreiber, which just means ballpoint pen. And uh, I bought it in lemon. That is this very cool, very nice yellow color. I like it a lot. The pen is sold in lots of great colors, a really cool green, a black, a gray, and a few others. So I, was, uh, I took a gamble on the yellow, and I think it looks uh, quite sharp. Not too much else on the box. Of note, there were some instructions in here, and I don't think there's anything particularly notable here. We'll see a little bit of information about the Der Griffle. It's a pen based on a pen from the 20s in Germany. And you could pause it and get the full download if you'd like. So here's the pen itself. It is definitely on the short side. So it is one, two, three, four, five inches long. It's, uh, let's put it next to some other pens. So here's it next to a uh, Pilot Petit One, which is a pocket pen, quite small. Here's it next to like a standard ballpoint. Here's that Sharpie S-Gel. So you see it's quite, uh, quite small relative to you know, what you would consider to be a standard pen. Obviously the black wing is, is super long. So not great for comparison purposes, but it's definitely on the small side. It's kind of like something you throw in your bag or your pocket, keep on you. No clip. There's no option to buy a clip. There is no clip. So keep that in mind. If this is a, a pen that you want to keep with you, which the size would indicate, the fact it doesn't have a clip is uh, going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. When I see a pen like this, I kind of think of it as something that would sit on your desk just because there's no clip. It has a uh, just kind of a desk-friendly mechanism. T typically, like if I was out and about, you want a clicker. But this one you could do one hand. It's not a terrible mechanism for one hand. It does take some adjusting, but it's not that bad. The clip, sorry, not the clip. The mechanism is quite cool. It's a little metal piece here. And as you turn it, you can only turn it clockwise you can't turn it counterclockwise if you turn it clockwise you could feel a lot of resistance like spring-loaded resistance and if you let go it returns you hit a point and then it pops into shape and you could feel it kind of push 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 then it hits the actuation point and it locks in and you could see how that works out 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 and then back a little bit and that is the mechanism seating and it locking into place. When you go back, all you have to do is unseat it and it kind of spins back on its own. So really, it's a really fun mechanism. I like it a whole lot. Metal barrel says the uh, Leustrom 1917, then their Dare Griffel and that nice script. I'm not sure what NR1 is, if that's the model or what, but uh, this is really, really nicely done. The paint job 
may not come across on video, but it really, uh, it's, an, it's a nice matte powder coat. I think they did a really nice job there. Metal here, metal here. A little bit of that cool bronze color. I really like how they threw that in there. Looks super classy. The top piece doesn't come off. You could turn it, I guess it does come off, but uh, you, uh, sorry. The, the bottom piece does come off and the top piece comes off. Generally, I've been using the front piece, but you could take it apart, apart entirely. The uh, refill is this uh, Leuchtturm 1917 Flow Blue Germany. Uh, has your ISO G2 standard, so it's a, uh, a pretty standard ballpoint refill. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who makes this one, but it just feels like a, a standard uh, rotring type blue rollerball refill. We'll do a quick writing sample in a second to see. And uh, here are the components, right? It's the front piece, spring, G2 refill, the barrel is very simple, metal barrel, and uh, this piece at the top, it's plastic married to a little piece of metal. And uh, you could put this piece back in place if you'd like. Put this in here and put it in that way. So you could do the pen either way. For me, I just been, it seems easier just to take the front piece off, but you could take the back piece off if you'd like. I, I don't know, something about, it, it tells me like I don't really want to mess with the back piece. It's plastic. It doesn't seem sensitive, but it might be. So I've been leaving that one alone. Uh, so I've been doing it with the front piece. Really nice, really nice work here. You can see that's sort of off-white. It's like an eggshell and the paint is carried through and they painted on the inside mostly. I don't know, just really, uh, the hardware is really nice. And that makes sense because the pen sells for about $30, which is not at all cheap for this pen. But if you look around in its peer group, I guess I'm not entirely shocked that it is $30. It's largely metal and it's nicely built, even if it is small. It is on the light side. I wish it was a little bit heavier. But like I said, to that peer group, this pen is a lot like the Baron Fig, the Squire it's called which is, uh, I think that's about a $45 pen. The click one's about maybe 35, but the twist one, it's, it's the same thing. It's no clip, all metal body, top twist. And that is exactly the Baron Fig. That's the formula the uh, like turn, uh, Leustrom followed here. Uh, a similar pen is the uh, Caveco. And they have, uh, I'm blanking on the name. It's kind of like the Caveco Special or something like that, which is all metal with a twist top of ballpoint. And I'm not sure if one company makes them all or if there's just a, a factory in Taiwan that could just pump out like top quality metal twist top pens. I'm not sure about that. That I got to figure out. But uh, they're all in line with each other. So if you're looking at this Leustrom pen and you're not just like totally in love with the brand or you maybe just like you're not usually attached to the brand, you could also check out the Baron Fig, which is a slightly, uh, slightly wider pen. It's rounded. Again, no clip or the Caveco, which is actually, I would say, one price category up one up. I think that one's about $55 or $60. Here's that blue ballpoint refill, just a standard ballpoint. Uh, like I said, it's similar to a Rotring blue or a uh, Parker uh, Quink Flow blue. It's, you know, it's a, it's a solid ballpoint blue ISO G2. Parker style refill. No problems here. Writes nicely. Uh, it's not super smooth. If you want to make it a little bit more smooth or you want that color to pop a little bit, you can move over to a G2, uh, sorry, a gel refill. So yeah, that is the Leustrom 1917 Dare Griffel. Uh, really nice pen. I've been really happy with it. I think it's a little bit overpriced at $30, but the whole group of pens, the whole competitive set of this pen is more than $30, so to say it's overpriced is a little bit questionable. Maybe you like the Baron Fig a little bit better, or you think it uh, uses slightly nicer materials or whatever, then, uh, you know, fair point. Uh, so I'd really like to see this around maybe $20 instead of 30, but it kind of is what it is, and it's a nice pen, and it comes from a great company that has really uh, done really well in the paper products area. So that is the Leustrom 1917 Dare Griffel 
maybe NR1, I'm not sure on the full name, but there you go. Thanks for watching.